Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve kth smallest element in a binary search tree. So we're given the root of a binary search tree and an integer k and we want to return the kth smallest element in the binary search tree, right? And so remember a binary search tree by definition means that it's in order, meaning that for let's say three, everything in its left subtree is going to be less than three, everything in its right subtree is going to be greater than three. And so let's say k equals one, that means we want the one smallest element in the binary search tree. So if you put all four of these elements in order, we get a one, two, three, and four. The smallest element is one, so then we can return one. And now, so your first thought with this problem might be that, okay, so in order, like you saw what I just did, right? I just took every element and put it in order and then took the kth element, right? And if k was two, we would get the second element. If k was three, we'd get the third element, right? So is there a way I can take this binary search tree and then put it into a sorted array or something? And the answer is yes, right? Because binary search tree means that if we traverse this tree in order and then take each element and then put it into an array, then we've basically solved this problem. So for example, we start at the root, but we don't visit the value yet, right? We go to the left child, right? And then we see, okay, it doesn't have a left subtree, right? It doesn't have any left child. So then we visit one. By that, I mean, we basically put it inside of our array. Then we go to its right subtree. We see, okay, two, we add two to the array. And of course, since we know K is one, we could actually stop here once we visited the one, but we could also continue to add elements. So then we'd pop back up to the three, add the three, and then we go to the right child and then see the four and add the four. And so you know that writing an in-order traversal for a binary search tree recursively is pretty easy, right? But I'm gonna show you how to do it iteratively, which you might not know yet, but it's actually pretty similar to doing the recursive solution. So you saw how the recursive solution works, right? Let's say we visit one, then we go to its right child, right? We visit one and then we visit two, and then we end up having to pop back up to the three, right? So to pop back up here, we know the recursive call will eventually come back like with the call stack, right? That's how function calls or method calls work. But if we're doing it iteratively, not recursively, right? Then we need a stack to contain the previous nodes that we need to pop back up to. So I'm gonna show you how to do this problem with a stack iteratively. So let's say that this is our stack. So iteratively, we start at the root, right? And we, we're not gonna visit this node yet, right? So we're not gonna count it as a kth value yet because we wanna go through everything in the left subtree first. So next, I'm just gonna keep going as far left as I can. So I'm gonna go to this node, right? It's left child, but before I go here, I'm gonna add the three to the stack because we know we wanna pop back up to this three when we're done traversing the left subtree. So now I'm at the one, I'm gonna to go to its left child, right? But we see it's null, right? But before I go to null, I'm gonna add one to the stack. But once we reach a null case, that means it's time for us to pop back up and go back up to the previous node. And we know that because we just look at the top of our stack. So we take this one, we remove the one, and so basically when we remove an element from the stack, that means we're processing it or visiting it. And we see K is equal to one. This is the first value that we just visited, right? So then it must be the result. So the one that we just popped is gonna be the output, right? But let's say that it wasn't. Let's just continue the iterative solution just so you can kind of understand how it works. So now I'm at the one, right? We just processed the one. We don't have to ever consider it again. So I'm just going to cross it out. But now once we pop up, right, we visit a node, then we want to go to its right child. Only after we visit the node, after that, do we want to go to its right subtree, right? Because remember, we're trying to do this in order. So with three still remaining in the stack, we're going to go to two, right? So now we're going to add two to the stack. 
And now I'm going to go to the left child of two, right? We know it's null. So, so then we're allowed to pop back up, right? So we're going to go to the two. It's because it's a, at the top of our stack, right? So the two is at the top of our stack. So now we're going to pop the two off. So meaning we're processing the node two, we're visiting it. So we can cross it out now. And now I'm going to go to its right subtree, which is also now null, right? Because now that we process two, we're allowed to go to its right subtree, but we see that it's null. So since it's null, that means we pop again from our stack, right? So we're done with this null, but conveniently for us, we have a three at the top of our stack. We crossed these two values out. So now we're going to automatically go back up here. So we pop the three. So now it's time to process the three, right? We process it, we look at it, we visit it, whatever you want to call it. And after we visit it, then we we're allowed to go to the right subtree. So now we we're at four. So we add four to our stack and you basically know what's going to happen. Now we're going to try to go to the left subtree, but it's going to be null. So we pop from the, from the stack. So we process four, but then we try going to the right subtree. It's also null. So now that, so now we look at our stack, right? We're going to pop again from our stack, but our stack is empty, right? So that's how you know the algorithm is done. We visited every node that we needed to. And if you were actually keeping track and you noticed the order that we popped the elements in, so basically the first element we popped from our stack was a one, if you were paying attention. After that, we did a two, right? We popped the two and then we went back up to the three. We popped the three. And then finally we visited the four, right? So even though we did it iteratively, we visited the elements exactly in order. So it's surprisingly the iterative solution is not quite as hard as you might expect. Let me show you the code for it now. So I'm going to declare a variable n to basically tell us the number of elements that we visited from our tree once n equals k that's how you know we visited the element that we wanted to and then we can return that value and remember i'm also going to have a stack which is going to help us because we we need it because we're doing this iteratively so i'm also going to have actually a pointer cur it's going to initially point at the root it's basically going to tell us what node that we're currently visiting or at the node that we're currently at and so i'm going to have a while loop basically while current is not null and the stack is non-empty we're going to continue uh, traversing our binary tree, right? That makes sense so far. And remember, the first thing we want to do, is, let's say we're at cur, what are we going to do? We're, while current is not null, we're just going to keep going left, right? Remember, we want to go through every node in the left subtree before we visit the current node. So while current is not null, we're going to set current equal to current dot left. But remember, before we do that, we have to go back up to the current after we're done processing current.left. So before I do that, I'm going to take the stack and add current to it. And so when this loop is done executing, that means current is at null. So that means we went too far. And that means we have to pop the last element that we added to our stack. So actually stack pop we're popping the most recently added value from our stack and we're going to set it to cur so now that we pop this element cur that means we're processing it so what we can do is actually update our n value that means n that means we just visited another node so we can increment n by one and if n happens to be equal to k that means the current node that we just uh, processed is the value we're looking for because remember we are looking for the kth smallest element so if that's true then we can just return current dot value and we're done we don't have to visit any extra elements but what happens if this is not the case well we just processed current right that means that we're allowed to now go to its right subtree so we can actually update current now and set it to current dot right and so what's going to happen now? Well, the loop is going to actually go back up. If current.write is non-null or the stack is non-null, then we're going to start our loop. And for that node, we're going to keep going left as much as we can. Maybe it doesn't have a left subtree. So then this part is not is not going to execute. And then we're, end up, we're going to end up just popping again from our stack. 
And conveniently for us in this problem, we're guaranteed to have at least K nodes in our tree. So this is actually always going to execute. We're not going to end up exiting this while loop. So we actually don't even need a return statement over here. And this actually is the entire code. Let me just run it for you to prove that it works. And as you can see, it's according to this, not pretty efficient, but I'm pretty sure if I ran it again, I would get a much more efficient time. But you can see this is the iterative solution. It's roughly the, the same time complexity as the uh, recursive solution. And surprisingly, uh, it's not that much code, right? Like you might expect the iterative solution to be more complex, but we're actually not doing anything fancy. We're just going as far left as we possibly can, adding the values to the stack and then popping from the right when we need to. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.